Hi, this is Mad Jen with Mad as Heck, Moms and Dads Associated Society helping to educate conservative constitutionalists. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll like the video and I hope you'll share it. Um, I have a friend who likes to um, who likes to feed me articles that he knows is going to get a reaction out of me, something that's going to irritate me and get me riled up because he likes for me to do my rants. Why? I don't know, because the liberals that come on and watch my rants, they tell me how stupid I am and how ugly I am and how boring I am and how how dumb I am or, or whatever. So that anybody likes to watch these is, you know, kind of flattering. Um, but the great thing about all the liberals who hate my rant and tell me how much they hate them, maybe that means I don't have to worry about them watching because since I'm so pathetic and 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 ugly and and boring, then I don't have to worry about them. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do my next rant about uh, about an article that my friend sent me about the 25 most obnoxious things that Barack Obama has said. Now I'm not going to go through all of them today because this rant would probably be about an hour long because after each little thing um, I would probably have a long monologue explaining just how ridiculous I think the man is. But with no further ado, we will go ahead and start with number 25. Number 25 is, no, no, I've been practicing. I bowled a 129. It's like, it was like Special Olympics or something. Now, this is wrong on so many levels. Of course, Barack Obama said it, so of course it's wrong on so many levels. But I remember when the Special Olympics thing came out, uh, the thing that he said, the Special Olympics quote that he said, and, you know, there was a little bit of backlash about it, but, you know, the media brushed it under the rug as quickly as possible as they always do when Obama does something incredibly stupid, which is like, what, every five minutes? Um, well, no, he's golfing every five minutes, and I don't know if he's any good at golfing or not, but I'm sure he's doing something stupid if he's golfing. He probably hit somebody in the head with the golf ball at some point in time. But anyway, um, first of all, it's obnoxious because, you know, he felt it was okay to ridicule the Special Olympics on public, you know, national television. Not only that, it's arrogant and obnoxious, because a 129, at least for people like me, is a pretty darn good score. So he's trying to make it sound like his really good score really wasn't that good. And um, so, once again, his high level of arrogance and obnoxiousness. Um, anyone who's that arrogant, you should really question whether they should be leading anything, especially the... United States of America. But we'll move on to number 24. By the way, before I do that, I would like to credit the author of this article. His name is John Hawkins, which, by the way, great name. Um, I have long history with the name of Hawkins, and so uh, John Hawkins, of course it's a great article because you've got a great name. But anyway, this is from beforeitsnews.com. <laughs> I have dogs in the back that like to make noises while I'm doing my videos. Okay, anyway, number 24. The next quote is, I have become a symbol of the possibility of America returning to our best traditions. First of all, when has Barack Obama ever displayed that he has any freaking clue what our traditions are as Americans? Not only does he not have a clue, he's actively trying to destroy our traditions by insulting uh, Christianity and, and insulting the Special Olympics and um, his wife likes to say all that for a damn flag whenever uh, we held a very solemn ceremony. Um, his wife was never proud of our nation until he was elected so what I guess she didn't like our traditions too much so um, the fact that he's the symbol of America returning does the man love himself or what? Um, I think most of us who or find themselves around people with this type of arrogance and obnoxiousness would really rather just punch them in the face. Um, and I'm not just talking about Barack Obama, I'm talking about anyone who displays this type of arrogance, but especially Barack Obama. Number 23, I do think at a certain point you've made enough money. Okay, so Barack Obama, you've made enough money. I think at this point you've made enough money. So why don't you give it all back to the taxpayers? All of these lavish vacations you and your your little butch wife is taking. Uh, why don't you give that money back? You've made enough. You're done. Um, so I, I have declared that you have made enough money. 
and that you need to give it back to us like now immediately and while you're at it why don't but I, well, no no I take that back I'll let you have one little bit of money to move out of the White House on I'll be happy to to spring for that bill so that you can get the bleep out of our White House because um, you're tainting it with your arrogance and your ugliness and your liberal communist Marxist crap ah, moving on to 22 to avoid this is a long one to avoid this is from his book I believe or um, that dude's book uh, who's it Bill Ayers it's from Bill Ayers book who you know he wrote it as though he were Barack Obama but anyway we'll move on to avoid being mistaken for a sellout I chose my friends carefully the more politically active black students, the foreign students, the Chicanos, the Marxist professors and structural feminists and punk rock performance poets, we smoked cigarettes and wore leather jackets. At night, in the dorms, we discussed neo-colonialism, <laughs> Nesh D'Souza much, Obama 2016, Franz Fanon, and uh, Eurocentricism and patriarchy. First of all, I don't think Barack Obama is smart enough to even know what the hell any of that crap means. He probably knows what neocolonialism is, um, but the rest of it can't imagine that he has two brain cells that work enough to allow him to have those type of thoughts. Bill Ayers, even though he's a terrorist piece of crap, um, I would bet he's probably much more mentally sophisticated than Obama, But which is why he wrote this. Anyway, when we ground out our cigarettes in the hallway carpet or set our stereo so loud that the walls began to shake, we were resisting bourgeois society stifling conventions. We weren't indifferent or careless or insecure. We were alienated. Brother. But this strategy alone couldn't provide the distance I wanted from Joyce or my past. After all, there were thousands of so-called campus radicals, most of them white and tenured and happily tolerant. No, it... Happily tolerant. I thought liberals were all about tolerance. So Barack Obama is insulting tolerant people. Hmm. Okay. We weren't indifferent to... Oh, oh, sorry. Happily tolerant. No, it remained necessary to prove which side you were on, to show your loyalty to the black masses, to strike out and name names. All right. I'll move on. I'll, I'll come back to that one because we're getting pretty long-winded here. But number 21, we'll stop with this one. I believe in keeping guns out of our inner cities and that our leaders must say so in the face of gun manufacturers' lobby. Well, you know what? You keep guns out of the inner cities and guess what happens? They turn into Chicago where the murder rate is like through the freaking roof. Yeah, that's what happens when you purposely keep guns out because guess what? The only people who abide by those laws are law-abiding citizens. The criminals don't abide by those laws, so they go get their guns from somewhere else and go kill people with them. <gasps> oh my gosh, I've been epiphany. Heaven forbid we might use common sense. All right, back to the long quote from number 22. I just want to say, this is what happens when, no offense to any single mothers out there, some women are single mothers because they have no choice. It just happened, and they at least became a mother instead of aborting their children or maybe a husband died or whatever, but when you raise a child completely away from his other parent or her other parent, it causes a lot of confusion for the kids, folks. It really does. It causes them to grow up very, they feel, they feel like they're missing something in their lives, like they've missed out on something, and they're very confused, and they're often very angry. But, you know, I know you liberals aren't going to buy that crap. Um, so, you know, Maybe if he'd grown up with a, a with his father, and would have realized what he what the man was like, or at least the man he says is his father, then maybe he wouldn't have had all this uh, cognitive dissonance going on in his childhood growing up, and he wouldn't be so confused and so angry, and so maybe he wouldn't hate America so much. But I don't know. I'm just conject. Uh, I'm just come bringing coming up with something there. I I don't know. That may not be the case, but. Um, it says something for um, where we've come in our nation and where we need to go. And um, this is the type of person that we have running our nation right now. And uh, th we've only gotten through four of the uh, quotes from Barack Obama. Can't imagine what the other ones are going to say and uh, what kind of idiocy is going to result from the remaining quotes. So stay tuned, come back, and um, I'll, I'll get through them. And... Uh, 
Go ahead and comment. Tell me what you think. I'm sure you'll tell me how fat, ugly, stupid, and lazy, and no, oh, no, not lazy, but fat, ugly, stupid, and uh, incompetent, and and just plain dumb I am. But that's okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep on talking, and I'm just going to keep pestering you and making sure that you have a reason to hate me more. So with that, long live the Republic.